I want to show you how to block in dark values on your grisaille. I'm working on the 16 by 20 acrylic portrait of Paul the Apostle praying, trying to emulate kind of a Caravaggio tenebristic style where we put a brown toning ground over the whole thing and then go on top with titanium white highlights. But now it's time to block in with the darker values and create some contrast so that this image will have the appropriate drama and feel that we're going for. Um, so let me just ask a blessing on this and we'll get started. <clears throat> Father, I ask a blessing on this painting. Help me to be able to capture uh, this portrait well, this, this drama here within this image. Bless the students watching and I pray that this video would be of encouragement and help to them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, and before we get started, I'd like to give you a free guide called my value checker tool. You can download that below at uh, the description of the video and in the top comment. And what that will do is it'll help you improve your realism by giving you a way of measuring your values. It's an actual chart you can print out. So get, go ahead and get that um, in the description below, my gift to you. Now, let's go ahead and block in here. Uh, we're gonna take it some raw umber dark and ultramarine blue and mix those two colors together. And that's gonna give us something really dark to work out of. Yeah, okay, just get a little bit of burnt sienna in there too. All right, and a little more ultramarine blue. And that creates just a nice, nice dark color that we can use then and we're going to establish some contrast with that. So I think I'm going to use a larger brush. Let's switch to this larger flat. And let's just fill this up with a little more paint here. A little more ultramarine blue. Just make this somewhat of a cooler tint here. Oh, I got a phone call, but it was unknown. Telemarketer, so we'll just leave that be. Okay, we're adding the ultramarine blue here and just kind of cutting in. So it's got some degree of translucence. I'm probably gonna need to create more. So yeah, we're gonna have to go with a little bit more here. Okay, that's a little more opaque, quite a bit more opaque. That's all right though. That's okay to go a little more opaque. I'll just kind of work this all in because we're going for a very rich black color eventually behind him. So uh, we have to get there eventually. Might as well start now. The only thing is I just have to be careful as I'm cutting around uh, his clothing here. Just make sure that I don't go in too far. And as we're cutting around his hair, I want to make sure that we do that appropriately. Leave a little room for the, the sketch. So we're just going to block around his hair. And we know that acrylic does dry pretty fast. So we have to smooth this out while we can. Got a couple of lumps in that. Now I'll get a little bit lighter as we get toward the, uh, the window. So here as we exhaust the supply of paint on the brush, 
You can see it's naturally getting a little lighter and that's okay. That's all right. I'll just continue this on. I have to grab a stool. I have to grab a stool to stand on here so that there's no glare because when I'm below the lights kind of give a little bit of glare on that paint. So this helps me to see it without the glare so I can tell what I'm doing, which is important. Okay, we're just going to continue cutting around the subject. We'll add a little bit of matte medium to this and just thin it out a bit as we get into this other area. Now we want to cut up along the edge of that stone got to keep that balance between hard edges and soft edges and that is really what helps to create the realism just getting the balance between those two different factors okay cut up along the edge here of the window It didn't quite blend, but we'll we'll get that in the next layer, no worries. I'm gonna cut up on this other side here. Okay, and just quickly kind of fan this out. bold than what we usually do. I'm going to go a little darker on the bottom and then kind of fade my way up to a little bit lighter on the top here. So let's do some diagonal brush strokes to smooth that out. Okay. So I added just a tiny bit of alizarin crimson to this. Uh, just a little bit of alizarin crimson. Raw, or dark, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and alizarin crimson just to give it a little more richness. Now let's blend this in. See if we can bridge the gap, get these two areas kind of blended together. We do some diagonal brush strokes and smooth this out and go back the other way. That's how you get it smoothed out and vertical again. And then less brush pressure, really smooth it out. Now we might end up getting some choppy areas and if we do, we'll, we'll just have to get a little more opaque on the next run. Here we will be going a little more opaque with this. Okay, so now below we can get more of a shadow here. And that'll be good. Cut up along the edge of that um, pottery. So we're really going to use the corner of the brush just to get that area established. All right, that's good. Try to keep somewhat vertical strokes with this just because it is a wall. And now uh, we're gonna need to blend on this left-hand side. I really left that in an awkward position. 
And it probably, yeah, it's already, it's already set up and dried. So I'm just gonna kinda have to paint around this here and we'll get a little bit more opaque. But yeah, it's, it's gonna get dark enough. We'll be able to overcome that. That won't be an issue. A little bit of a cooler color on the bottom. I'm using kind of a perpendicular brush stroke to really let that um, really help it to not dig into the paint. And that's a great way to overcome that tendency of acrylic to do that. Just hold that brush kind of perpendicular, drag it up and ease the pressure as you get toward the top. And you can see even though um, I approached it the wrong way by allowing that to dry and not getting it to a decisive edge. Still able to overcome that. We got to believe that God will always help us no matter what. And we trust in Him. So if you hit a snag in your painting, you got to believe it's going to work out. And God will help you to work it out. Okay, I'm going to try to get to a nice edge here because I will have to switch brushes as I work into the interior of the figure. <clears throat> For now though, let's get some of these wrinkles on the bottom. Oh yeah, let's do this table. That can have a hard edge on it. Just use a firm brush stroke and then smooth it out as you get that decisive edge. Okay, firm brush stroke, just to develop that edge of the table. And even this right here, develop that a little more. With this scroll, we wanna, wanna show that. Get Turn the form a little bit on the edge. <clears throat> okay, now we, I think, could switch to a smaller brush. And let's do some of the interior work here. So we're going to do some of the shadows in the figure and that's going to be important so let's switch to that uh, smaller brush for that take a what is this maybe a 5 8 flat start in the bottom here get some of these wrinkles on whatever this is this blanket that's down there just try to imagine maybe that's where he was sleeping and we just want to establish some of those wrinkles for that. Okay. A little bit of a wrinkle up here. go. I want to work some of these into the clothing. Um, let's have a bit of a shadow right here under his arm. And then we need to also develop some of this, uh, want to work it into the such we have a lost edge on his shoulder area. So we'll have a hard edge right here. And notice how I'm not overlapping. If I overlap into what I already did, it's going to get darker where it overlaps. So I'm just meeting it up to that edge. So the value still matches. That's important. 
because that's already dried. I can't go over it now. So I have to kind of meet up to the edge of it. And this smaller brush gives me a little more control. So that's why I'm using this as opposed to have done this with the, the larger brush. Okay, we're gonna get a couple of dark valleys on the interior here, dark value there. I'm just trying to spot any dark values um, from the reference photo. As we look at the reference photo, trying to observe that sense of contrast and get that nice chiaroscuro uh, tenembristic effect. So this area here is quite dark and we're establishing that. There's a nice lost edge opportunity there on the shoulder. And a little bit right here on this forearm area. Um, we'll have to hit this with some more layers. We could also get a little bit here and now on this spot below on the lower chest we can use a dry brushing technique less pressure to kind of blend in and get a gradient get some shading there same thing here now I'm going to add a little paint to my brush just so I can get a nice decisive edge on the end of that sleeve it's a little more contrast right there in a couple of spots here where we can use some light pressure and get just a little bit of shading in there on that triangular space below. Now let's put in a little bit of shading. Again, we're gonna use some ultramarine blue here. You can see on my palette what this looks like. And uh, we'll want to get a little bit of that cooler, these cooler tones on his face. So let's work this in. I mean, it's still kind of this brownish color, but we're just working it on the face. Because that contrast is very, very important. So just kind of filling in this area on the hair, the values are quite dark. Shadow right here on the neck, it's gonna have a fairly hard edge on it and I wanna put that in there. I'll leave a little bit of room for the white of the beard. Cut in this action here on the neck, on that jugular vein area. Okay, now we'll switch to the smaller brush. And let's go ahead and put in some smaller nuances in the face using this darker color. So for example, let's um, kind of work in some shading around the eyes, a little bit right around the top here, going into that upper bone. Shadow right here, shadow there. Okay, I'll add a little bit of a glaze on the upper eye. And in the mouth, get that a little darker, the shadow from the nose a little bit darker, all of that. And a little bit of shading for the ear. All right, and now let's go down to the hands and we'll work on those. Just establish some darker tones here. So still we're kind of keeping this pretty monochromatic. We do have a sense of warmth because you can see the glaze work underneath. This 
kind of brown tonal glaze, but mostly it's pretty monochromatic. And we'll add more color as we go along. Now, right now I'm mostly concerned about the values and the contrast and the value. And I'm going to darken his arm right here and uh, we'll establish this darker tone here. Okay, the shading coming from the hands. A little bit darker, let's see, right down in here. Yep, the gap between the fingers. And then even all the way up to the edge. We want to get a nice hard edge. I'm going to put in a little bit of a darker value just along the edge of the highlight on those fingers on the right hand side just to really make that pop. Eventually this will be filled in with color but I want to get that hard edge on there right now because I love those hard edges and those distinctions between the hard edges and soft edges. It's so important. Alright so now let's uh, go down to the, um, the vase and we're going to do a little bit of work on that. And we're just going to fill the interior in. It looks like it's all kind of just one solid mass of dark color. And then we've got the dark shading on this side of the pottery. And there's really not any light on the other side. So it's going to be filled in pretty solidly right here. Probably should be using a different brush. Probably should use a flat brush, but I'm just going to stick with this if I can make it work. Just kind of do some curvilinear brush strokes around. It's going to get a little lighter on this right hand side. I'm just going to establish that. Okay, and then, and that correlates with our light source and the fact that we have the light over up here. And we will have a strong shadow being cast down there going onto the table. And let's get a little bit of a shadow right here under this scroll being cast onto the table. There. Finally, let's fill this area in here uh, on his arm because that's important. Want to make sure that we've got that nice kind of dark shadow on the interior of the clothing. Okay, and then I did miss this, but let's get a little bit of a shadow under the hand right here uh, as it goes into the wrist. That's a pretty dark area that I can see based on the reference photo. Okay, so this is where we're at right now. Um, I like it. I, I think it's looking good. Um, there's going to be more contrast needed in certain areas. Um, establishing really this nice hard edge here. We're going to have to do another glaze there to define that more. But I'm liking how it's coming along. Uh, still need to do the bars up here, but we'll do that another time. I just want to show you this process of adding these darker values, blocking in your dark values um, in a Caravaggio grisaille technique adapted for acrylics. And again, it's not a perfect replication of his technique, um, but I'm just inspired by how he did what he did. And I'm trying to incorporate a little bit of that in my own paintings. And I hope this helps you as well. I hope it gives you some ideas on what you can do in your portraits. Um, if it does, let me know. Um, get, leave me a comment. Let me know how you plan on using this technique in one of your portraits or paintings coming up soon. Um, just give me your honest thoughts on this. And of course, like this video. It helps to be seen by more people um, on YouTube. Share it with a friend on Facebook, your social media of choice. And uh, be sure to keep in touch with me at realisticacrylic.com 
where I have several tips and tutorials to help you with your portrait painting. Lastly, subscribe to this channel and I will send you notifications when I do a new video. All right, thank you so much for watching. God bless and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.